Superman Annual 2023, Joshua Williamson and a lot of artists, which I'll tell you about in a minute <laughs> when I'm looking at the credits <laughs> page. Uh, there was too many to bother writing down in the, the timestamps. So, do you know what? Right. The Superman run from Williamson, which is only like five or six issues so far, is, mm-hmm. you know, it's been very up and down. There's things I've liked, there's things that I've really not liked. And, you know, that's kind of par for the course for Williamson for me at this point. Uh, but I will say it, this annual came out at the perfect time when we're desperate for the regular books that it was yeah. just nice to have and let me make this clear this is very much the next issue in the run because there's no way this isn't in the trade between issues whatever in it, you know whatever five and six yeah five and six yeah. because this advances the story it references everything that's going on it probably has the biggest uh, Marlin Moonlight bit that we've had so far and it's mm-hmm. going to be important going forward so uh, this is very much not skippable as an annual, uh, which yeah. I, I prefer uh, yeah. anyway. Like, even in, even in a normal comics month, I would rather the annual just be an extra issue of the main book. But this month, especially when we've not had most of the main books, I especially appreciated that this was just the next issue of Superman. Yeah, and I like that. And in an annual sense too, we get like a bunch of interconnected stories, right? So it's I, I had a misunderstanding reading what this was about, um, but. Uh, in this issue, it's Lois acting as editor in chief, sending out the Daily Planet reporters to go cover different things that are that have occurred and are occurring in Metropolis. You know, so it kind of is revisiting some of the plot threads that we've seen, um, and I think it does it very effectively. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think it's you say. I mean, it is interconnected stories, like you said, but it it's not like in a, a gimmicky way. It's just you know, there's just because there's more pages, there's more stories yeah. they can put in, there's more subplots yeah. that they can put in, and they do this thing early on where Lois is talking to all the writers at the Daily Planet, and we get this rundown of the ones that you know, which are, you know are, are Cat and they've they've mm-hmm. recently, you know, in recent years they've made a a, a, a an effort to for Trish, who's like the gossip columnist, to, to yeah. be like there. Steve's obviously a classic. But, uh-huh. you know, there's the other four, you know, the the, the politics guy, uh, Steve's mm-hmm. sister, I assume she's not new, but I mean, I don't really think I've heard her mm-hmm. be talked about much before. Um, and then the crime writer, who's Erica. Like, you know, there's a few extra ones. I'm like, okay, yeah. they're, they're building a whole roster of writers. And the whole point of this is that they all pitch their stories that might make page one. And Lois is like, this is the same shit you've all been writing about for ages. You know what? We're going to shake things up. And she basically hands them all... She flips all the assignments around. She makes Steve go talk to Livewire at the prison. She makes Kat go and do the ride along with the police. And makes, you know, she does all this. She shuffles everyone up. Yep. And they're all freaked out about it. All while in the background, Superman's fighting a mecha toy man device. Do you know what? You know? This book, other than like mentioning that Superman's fighting Toy Man somewhere mm-hmm. in the city, the book d- s- does not focus on it so much that when it actually did cut to a page of Superman's perspective, mm-hmm. like halfway or so through, it was kind of, I was like, wait, I, I, I didn't think we were going to do this. I thought this yeah. was going to be all just all these other characters' perspectives yeah. and we were going to just avoid Superman for mm-hmm. the issue. But um, we do get a little bit of him later on. Yeah. But I do like that it is in the background. He's fighting this big, gigantic, you know, Toy Man robot. And, you know, as, as Lois is trying to pull these other threads uh, together, and I, I do like how she picks, you know, she mixes it up in that way, because it, it gave me a, a really good laugh when Lombard comes back from talking to Livewire. You know? <laughs> she, she, she didn't know anything about sports, so I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, God, Lombard's the, he's the best at being the worst, yeah. you know? Uh, by the way, just while I'm on this page, uh, so the artists for this book are Mohamed Asrar, Edwin Ga- Galman, uh, Caitlin Yarsky, Max Rayner, and Jark Herbert. Um, and to this credit, despite the fact that there's five artists, I'm not going to say that I didn't notice the changes, but I will say I don't think there was any great weak links. I liked pretty much all the art to some degree in this. So yeah, I, I like that the different art styles too pop up into the story. So like, the, when when Jimmy goes to Supercore, right? That's one artist. Versus when um, what, what's the, one of the other plot lines? When Cat uh, goes on the ride along. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, those are two separate artists, and they keep it consistent throughout, right? Um, so it, it it creates this bigger sense, and that's where I was getting it with the interconnected stories, to where you know they're not interconnected to where we follow a thread from one to the other, but they are. These, this is what's going on at Metropolis all at the same time. 
Yeah, yeah. And there's some back and forth in the writer's, you know, the pen, you know, the, the, the writer's pen of the, the Daily Planet, mm-hmm. the dull pen. That's, that's the word I was looking for, a bullpen. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, pen, pen, something pen, something pen. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so you, you have all these things going on. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'm liking the comedy direction they've got Parasite going in. It's maybe because, you know, overall, before I go any further, I actually did yeah. mostly like this issue. Um, yeah. and it made me feel a bit more positive about the run but the two things that I don't like is that I don't like this whole Lex was kind of a hero in his early days and this issue sort of dives into like exploring that because mm-hmm. Lois is like how could we not know about this we're going to look into this right so that's one of the plot lines uh, yeah. but the other thing that I don't know if how I feel about is comedy parasite who works at Supercorp it is a bit much. However, <laughs> judging from the different versions of, of Rudy, the person he was before he was Parasite, mm. this is kind of who he was before. So I can buy the idea that if he's not constantly hungry, he can be a functioning member of society. Um, does he need to be working at Supercore? No. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I can look past it just a, a little bit. So... Uh, it did give me quite the laugh, though, when Jimmy's like, uh, Par- Parasite's here, right? And, you know, Mercy is like, oh, no, you know, he he's on work release. He has to go back every weekend. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, and it's funny because there's, like there's a whole little action scene here where they think Parasite's went bad, but it turns yeah. out it was one of the, the copies from the prior plot that's yeah. sort of on its own. And Parasite comes in and sort of says, I'll keep him uh, right. effectively as a pet. And I kind of felt like this was just like padding for the page count. I'm like, I feel like seeing yeah. him in the business, the, sh- the, the shirt and tie doing work, that could have just been the final point and ended the scene. But we, yeah. had, to, we had to have a little scare where, oh, as he went bad. Well, it didn't really matter. I also think it was Williamson reminding us that, that Mercy does have Lazarus Rain power still. Oh, yeah, because right? she forms she a cannon transforms. out of her yeah. arm. Yeah. Which I was like, are we going to forget about that? And no, because I do like too that Jimmy points out, like, we don't know anything about Mercy. We don't know what she did before she worked for Luther. She still calls him Mr. Luther, right? And like, she was just willing to let Superman come in and run Supercore. So I do like that they're, you know, Williamson is putting some seeds into was it, what, what Mercy has going on. Was it the Superman animated series? No, maybe it was a Justice League animated series where Mercy was a robot. There was definitely there was definitely a version yeah. where she was an android. <laughs> yeah, it was either Justice it was either Justice League uh, Unlimited or Superman uh, later seasons. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so Lois is frustrated that she's back at the office. She doesn't really like being editor. So as soon as Steve suggests that she go and interview Livewire herself, she's like, yeah. "Yeah, good idea, Steve. Hold down the fort with those donuts. Yeah. I'm going I'm going to go and talk like, to Livewire." Gotcha, Chief. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I will say I was surprised to get a reference to Bendis's run uh, here. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. With Red Cloud seeing Lois Lane at the prison and immediately being like, "Oh shit, I'm breaking out right now to try and kill her," uh, and then Lois convinces them to let out Livewire, and mm-hmm. Livewire fights on behalf of Lois because she wants to be interviewed. Uh, yeah. And and also Livewire is kind of good now because she's dating Jimmy. There's you know there's a whole. No no no, Banshee's dating Jimmy. Oh Banshee's dating Jimmy. You're right you're right, yeah. right. Sorry sorry. I'm, I'm but like... the thing with Livewire. Is, is I feel like Livewire just wants an audience. I'm mixing so if you up can my give it an audience. Yeah, I'm, I'm mixing up my, my 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 lady Superman villains here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, but I do like the idea that she just wants to be heard, and so you, if you let her just talk, she'll play ball because that's really and that's what Lois yeah. promises. It, jo- like. it was in my, it was in my head because there was a joke earlier on in the issue where yeah. uh, Trish is no, it was Cat who was saying, "Oh, I could talk uh-huh. about." Uh, uh, Jimmy and their, his new girlfriend, but uh-huh. we could wait a few days and I could just talk about the breakup instead. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, I get it. You know, Williamson does have a pretty good voice for a lot of these um, Daily Planet writers, right? Like he does. He that does. feels very spot yeah. on for Cat. So. I, I, I think he's doing a good job with the the, the person to person conversations mm-hmm. and the voices. It's this the, the greater plots that he sometimes is uh, maybe yeah. going to fumble. Um, so after that, we do cut to Superman and. Uh, I don't know which artist did this page, but he, they were going for Christopher Reeve because yep. I, see, I see Christopher Reeve at least on that one yep. panel. Uh, I think that's because it's kind of the darker, more shadowy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's Edwin Galman because I'm looking okay. at covers as, as we talk and that's looks like the style on the Edwin Galman okay, cover. Okay. So, uh, but so... It's, it kind of reminded me of, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike Perkins on the Lois book a little bit. No? Just me? No, I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, but anyway, so Superman goes to find Toy Man because he was fighting one of Toy Man's big things. 
uh mm-hmm. in the city but toy man's all tied up and gagged and he's like wait what's going yeah. on here it turns out uh the the evil doctors that have been you know the main villains mm-hmm. so far on this plot uh craft and farm farm that was it i was like it's not yeah. dr giggles i want to say giggles but it's yeah. not giggles yeah. uh so you know that's like okay that's interesting so they're they're they keep sort of setting up things for superman to do without striking them yet so that's like yeah. a, a thing that they've got going uh lois has got workers looking up all the old non-digitized records of any, anything written about lex in the old days because uh, yep. she wants to look into all this history and cats on the ride along and basically she's just kind of like uh, she's basically asking them about their love lives because that's what she yeah. she, she writes about she, and she's kind of flirting with the with the other cop you know and you know not not really doing i mean what is she supposed to do on a ride along besides just observe what the police are doing, right? Like, right about something else for a change, Matt. That's what she's about to do. Uh, no, no, I know that, but like, I don't know what what else. Cat, you know. So yeah. her flirting with the with the cop, I thought was pretty funny. But uh, there's a, a random robbery. Presumably, they're taking advantage that Superman's busy with big toy man stuff, <laughs> and uh, they they're in pursuit. But the Marilyn Moon, Moonlight character like comes in, and we get a big sequence with her making like guns out of light and like stopping these guys. And Cat like goes up and tries to get a quote um and there's an interesting little exchange here where she says um yeah. you know get, get like she, she asks uh don't you want the city to know that you're there to make them feel yeah. safe and she says uh no because metropolis has never felt safe for me so it's, it's right. sort of you know hitting at maybe some of the characteristics and themes that we're going to be hitting at with that character you know this is a black character so it feels like we're going to be hitting at some of that stuff yeah. which is which is good um mm-hmm. so and it's interesting to include cat more in this yeah. side of the plot you know that cat's the one who's like getting the scoop on her right. she's been this mysterious character we've seen like twice maybe you know right. until now you know and one of them was literally just there's a panel of her you know looking yeah. down at people that was all it was yeah. so that's that's curious to me and she decides to stay in the ride along so mm-hmm. fair enough uh, also we mean gonna talk about Marilyn moonlight riding a ghost horse you know on top of the cop car i thought that was pretty cool yeah, I mean, she yeah. she had the ghost horse before, right? Did she? This is the first time I remember seeing it. I think she and, but, and the first big appearance where she came in and saved the day. I think okay. I think she did. I, I could well, maybe I I'm totally, misremembering, but yeah, it, it I might be misremembering as well. But I thought the ghost horse was pretty rad. It didn't strike me as new. Like when, when I saw her, I was like, okay. yeah, that's that's her horse. I I feel like I feel like I'd see that. Maybe okay. I'm wrong, but it felt natural. <laughs> gotcha. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I thought it was a cool visual. Just it was running along the cop car, right? Also, you know, just, yeah. yeah. So, so the next scene, uh, Superman comes to speak to Lois, and I, I would have been fine not seeing Superman until this scene, you know, properly, because yeah. it's like we're following the writers of the mm-hmm. planet rather than him. But uh, it turns out that the big like sort of toy that he was fighting in the city, it was actually being controlled by some kids at an arcade because they didn't know yeah. they were controlling a robot. They just thought they were playing yeah. a video game, and I'm like. Hey, that could be fun to like do more of that sort of thing with these villains if they're like yeah. unwittingly well, that, having people be like accomplices without realizing it. You're right, and it kind of goes along with Toy Man too because it, you know the kids thought they were you know playing with the toy, mm. you know, and so it goes in and it was kind of like Toy Man never really succeeds in having the kids play with the toys, right? Because it always goes wrong. Uh, so it's almost like they're doing Toy Man better than Toy Man, and I don't think he'll take to that very kindly. You know, uh, when when he does respond. Yeah. So the two big things at the end of the book, which I think are, well, one's interest interesting. The first one, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, which is that Perry White was basically censoring any mention of Lex being a hero at the planet. That's why there's no record of it. Which is a little bit silly to me because it's not like there weren't other papers. There was other media right. besides the Daily Planet, so there'll um, still be a record of it. There's also the rival Daily Star. Superman's yes. worked for both. So uh-huh. like. Yeah, um, and I don't. What the type of person Perry White is? If Williamson goes and that he had this hidden because of X, Y, and Z, I just don't feel like the Perry White that I know, right? Well, would, would, uh, yeah, but that, that's the point: is that like, why <laughs> why did he do this? Right? You assume that there's going to be an interesting reason why he was doing this for Lex. If it was for Lex, even maybe it was for someone right. else. I don't know. But yeah, I just feel like like we've had stories where. It, the story is Perry's journalistic integrity is so strong that he doesn't yes. he doesn't shake whatsoever. That, that's so, why this is supposed to be shocking. I, I guess the concern comes from the fact that Williamson 
can often fumbles these things he, he sets yeah. something up and then we don't like what it does to the character so mm-hmm. i'm a little worried that he's going to do something yeah. that doesn't feel right for perry i guess i do like i prefer the threat of it never happening right or you know not that it was perry hiding it but it was something bigger than the newspapers that were able to get everything pulled right so that it, it technically lex as a hero never happened i still don't want to believe it happened because i don't like that thread like at all but, um, but I, yeah, I, I think there's possibilities with it. I just, I don't know if I trust Williamson to yeah. be the one to like have them work, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so the other big thing though, is that the villains, a farm and, and, uh, craft have got Lobo, right. And they've made a special syringe to take some of his blood and they're talking about his blood and, uh, all the rest of it, and they're wondering if other Sarsnians have the same regenerative qualities, mm-hmm. and Lobo's are like, ah, I'm one of a kind. Well, except that stupid daughter I've got, but other than that, I'm one yeah, of a kind. for nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we cut to, like, like a bunch of Lobos all fighting, and you're like, what's this? What's going on? And I was genuinely not sure, and the reveal is, is that Brainiac's got a city from Zarnia, uh, Zarnia and he's going to unleash them at full size to do something to earth <laughs> like he wants you know what? yeah Go ahead. Uh, well, so he's just just what he says here so for the first time ever he will not be alone in the universe which makes me think brainiac thinks there's another of his kind that unleashing the, the zarnians mm. uh basically he thinks the he thinks superman's adopted home holds the greatest secret in the universe mm. and he's going to use the zarnians to help him get it uh so the ver- it looks like we're going to have a bunch of lobos running around which i prefer to a bunch of kryptonians right well Super, I th- superman always being the last son and then oh no oh, there's sure. actually this secret yeah. colony of you know and it's not always maniac right it's it's argo city here it's whatever there's actually the secret colony of mm. of kryptonians that show up and all this other stuff so just the idea that there's more lobos but like what if they're actually more docile than him right? I mean, like, they don't look it in that one two page spread but no but you know it's like an ant farm. Maybe maybe they just need space, right? But but yeah, like I, I hope the twist is that they're not all like him, you mm. know. So I mean, we'll see. Cause... I think this was an effect of cliffhanger because it was a genuine surprise that it was a Brainiac thing. You know, yeah. it was like, okay, where are we? What's going on? Oh, it's Brainiac's got this ball. So we're getting Brainiac in the Superman run soon. Um, my only hope is is that we don't rush through the plot because that's what happened with the yeah. Parasite story. And I thought it was a really cool thing that was set up and then it was rushed and finished in the very next issue. And I hope that anything that's cool that's been set up is one, gets the time to actually be fleshed out, but two, doesn't just have Williamson kind of like hand-waving things with making up more mythology to explain things. I really hope that's not what happens. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, overall, I actually quite like this. I liked having the perspective of all the writers from the Daily Planet. I like mm-hmm. Lois running the place. I even like the idea of her discovering some of Perry's secrets uh because she's now editor i'm just not necessarily excited about the potential of what williamson will do with the idea that perry was hiding something for lex luther that feels a bit murky but yeah and the art's generally quite good uh it's surprisingly uh not messy for having five artists i'll, I'll give it that much yeah yeah uh you were saying at the beginning it, it's it's nice that this book came out during a week with night terrors just to remind us that there I, are books that aren't night terrors i certainly so, appreciate it a lot more i think getting it yeah. this week than i would if it was the fifth week of a regular month i, I think mm-hmm. this week i was just thankful to get the regular superman story despite the fact that i don't love everything in it there was enough good stuff and enjoyable like just you know getting to see these characters again i was just glad it wasn't a nightmare <laughs> you know i'm yeah. just i'm just glad for that for sure also i like the you know williams are bringing back the the threat of cat um and Toy Man, because Toy Man is responsible for the death of her son, which I, I, I'm right. always working yeah, yeah. on that. I can't remember if he if he killed her son when he kidnapped him, or if it was just one of the toys or whatever. But still, you know, Cat having that tie to Toy Man, I think, is a, a pretty big deal. Um, and I'm just trying to think of what Toy Man's technology could draw the blood from Lobo, like. Just trying to think about that, how how they were able to replicate or replicate it, use it. I kind of hit a wall, but you know, I just went along with it. But um, yeah, it's good to see Toy Man getting some more stuff on here. That's not uh, his 
his reality hopping gun that we saw in the pages of Batman. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Superman Annual. Uh, definitely an actual chapter of the, the overall story, so shouldn't be skipped if you're reading the Superman run. Yeah. Uh, what are you giving this book, Matt? I'm going to give this an eight. Really, really solid. Yeah, I think... Do you know what? I'm only gonna go seven point five because I feel like I'm I'm I feel like I'm being kinder and feel really good about it because uh-huh. of it being this like you know uh, oasis in the desert. You know, it's this <laughs> we're on dry okay. land and this is like a regular book, so I don't want to overshoot it. But I do like the perspective of all the writers, and I'm totally down for more Lois running the planet. I think that's quite interesting and exciting to see her sort of move out of her comfort zone and her plan to deal with that is to make everyone else out of their comfort zone is quite interesting so i hope there's more to come from that side of things 